G'day expats. Today just doing a summary video of the recent reintroduction of the main residence exemption that applies to non-residents or Australian expats. It was reintroduced in October. The legislation is still as damaging as the previous piece that was mentioned and introduced back in 2017. There are some caveats that they've introduced which act as a way of trying to preserve capital. The first caveat is what is considered an excluded foreign person. Now, an excluded foreign person is someone who has been a non-resident for a period of six years or greater. Now, the other caveats that they've included are life events. Now, the life events which mentioned in the legislation, which is still at draft stage, is if there's a death of yourself, obviously, a spouse or a child under the age of 18 years, in that period of six years, whilst you're declared a non-resident, if there's a divorce and a sale of the main residence must take place within that six year period of being a non-resident and if there's a terminal medical condition diagnosis within that six year period of yourself your spouse or a child under the age of 18 years so we can see there that by introducing these caveats it's a way that the ato is saying we're happy for you to preserve that capital due to the circumstances around that unfortunately this legislation is still just as damaging now let's revisit what the main residence exemption is. So the main residence exemption is a piece of legislation which allows us to buy a property, we move into it, we establish it as our main residence, we live in it for a period, you know, hypothetically 12 months, we move out of it, we move into another property that we're renting, and we can rent out that former main residence. As long as we don't buy a new main residence for a period up to six years, without any capital gains tax applying to that six years. So if we were to sell that property again at year five, it's not a taxable event in the eyes of the ATO. Now they are removing this legislation for non-residents and this is what this draft bill is. Now they've also amended the transition period. They've updated to 30th of June 2020, which as we know, as we're in November already, it's not leaving us much time to decide whether to sell our property. You consider an example, an expat held a property, uh, say in Sydney, they purchased it 15 years ago. They lived in it for a 10 year period and then they've headed overseas to pursue career pathways. They've rented out their former main residence now for five years, but due to this piece of legislation, they have to decide whether to sell the former main residence. If they choose to sell it after 30th of June 2020 and they're a non-resident at that time, they will pay capital gains tax on the property all the way back until the day that they first purchased it. Now, one item which the ATO hasn't considered is the cost in compliance. A lot of individuals, Australian expats, that have purchased their main residences are likely not have held their original purchase documents, such as the contract of sale, because originally they were under the interpretation that they wouldn't have to pay tax on this type of asset or property. So whilst they're saying that it's going to raise millions of dollars in tax revenue, it's actually going to cause a lot more issues for the ATO to validate some of the prices which are going to be used. It's a key consideration in this draft bill and whilst it's only a draft stage, it is on the order of business for November, so hopefully by December we'll know a lot more about what the, uh, the House of Representatives are thinking as well as the, the Senate as well. Appreciate your time and thanks for dropping by.